very active, according to what NASA was telling us earlier today. And another place things are very active is at the University of Indiana. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're joined by Rob and Brandon, uh, who were there with William Shatner. Well, William Shatner was up on stage. They were down off stage. But what a cool experience yeah. to be able to have. You have a solar eclipse, and you have William Shatner, a.k.a. Oh, wow. Captain Kirk. Wow. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely yeah. turning dark. I mean, just as you threw to us, it got noticeably darker and cooler out here. I have here. extreme fear of missing out right now. Can we put the eclipse on the Woo. screen so we can see it? You got to see this right now. There it, is a it is right there, right this minute. There is a tremendous difference between 99% totality and actual totality. So you need to see this thing full screen. So right now, what you're looking at is what is called the diamond ring, where that very top part of that uh, sun is going to be shining right through the mountains of the surface of the moon. This is what Tony was calling Bailey's beads. And we're this is also so weird because this was such a party atmosphere, and now no one's talking around here. Everyone is just staring at this. It's become kind of almost ominous because it's so dark and getting getting darker by the second out here. They just said right now that at 3.05, totality will occur, and that's when we will be able to take off our glasses and be able to see this unfiltered in all of its glory. And everybody here is just waiting for that very moment. And they've been playing very appropriate music. Age of Aquarius, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. Those are the songs they've been blasting here in Indiana University's football stadium. I don't have any way of judging this because people are everywhere, but there are probably about 10,000 people here where I am. It's a 60,000 seat football stadium, so it looks like there aren't a lot of people, but I would guess 10,000 are here. Whoa. It just a went to dark. Countdown here to we go. They say that we'll be able to see the stars in the sky as well. And here we go. Here we go. Count with me. Ten. Nine. It's eight, night time. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Just wait till you see what happens next. And we have our glasses off and we can see it perfectly. The heavens declare. And you can't imagine how many cameras are out where we are watching this, videotaping it. It is nighttime here, guys. It is utter nighttime. I am taking pictures all over the place. You guys would. This is where you got to be in totality to see it. It's so much different. The unbelievable <laughs> nature of this is that we can now look at it without glasses on. Everybody in the arena has taken these off, and you can see it perfectly yeah. because you cannot see any of the sun whatsoever, so it can't hurt your eyes. And they're cheering because of the stars you can see in the sky as well. It's a jet going through it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you guys can probably see that in the camera, too. A jet just flew through it. Yeah, it's probably uh, big, big bucks for that seat. I'm giddy like a kid at Christmas. It's so wild here. Now the beauty here is we get more than four minutes of this here. All right, guys. How awesome is that? We've got another 10-second countdown. Come another. Way. You want to put your glasses on? Ten so seconds. Countdown back here in ten, nine, eight, seven. 
I don't know if you can hear the gentleman on the PA. He is saying the sun is about to start coming back out again on us to put our glasses back on again. Uh, you see another diamond ring. Oh, we're already sensing, you can see a little more brightness. You can sense that yeah. it's getting just past totality now. They wait so long for it to get here and you don't want to see it go. The next time this happens is 2044. If you want to go to Montana, Florida in 2045. It's also interesting that whatever thousands of people are here can be this quiet. It's so amazing. I think we got a little overtime here, Rob. It's beautiful. We interviewed a gentleman who came from Los Angeles with his family to be in Bloomington, Indiana, just to see this. He said to us, it's like a religious experience. We're also here with about 21 other television stations, they told us. And some of them have tried turning it's on their lights so that their anchors the could screen. talk. And it really sticks out like, oh my gosh, that is so bright. Oh, whoa, here's oh, a diamond sun. ring. Now that's what that looks oh, like. Oh. That's a diamond ring. You don't even know what you're looking for until you see it. You don't even know what you're looking for until you see it. Wow. And all of a sudden, it is much, much brighter, noticeably brighter. Wow! That was wow. amazing. Wow. And now the sun is back out. It is brighter noticeably every second. Yeah. Just amazing. And I tell you, William Shatner talked all about the cosmos and the history of uh, the universe. How can you not get existential when thinking about these kinds of things, Rob? I mean, you're staring at this eclipse and you wow. feel united with all of humanity yeah. past. Just thinking about how all ancient civilizations saw those same things, it's just amazing. And the amazement that we have scientists and mathematicians who could tell us to look at the sky at this exact moment and know exactly when it was going to hit here in Bloomington, Indiana. And it did. Ten it's second phenomenal. countdowns on both sides. Yes. And they used that science to go back in time to date when important things happen in civilizations because they all recorded these things like we did. It's amazing. Unbelievable. I'm just so glad we were here, that it was sunny, and that we were able to share it with you. And uh, we're going to stay here and just contemplate more of what we just saw. And now it's hitting in more places to the farther east of us. Yes, and north as well. Back to yes. you. We're still waiting Thanks, here in Huntington. We're next.